Okay. All right. So good morning. Um, today I have a short talk about the uh, testing, how I test the Carlos kernel with the syscaller reproducers. And so I'm quite new to SUSE. I just joined the, the company back in March, so about six months ago. And I mainly work on the network card driver backports, although I, I, I'm not doing enough yet. And my team is the hardware enablement team Taipei, led by Joy Lee. So first, some background information. I, the first thing is CarWAS. So CarWAS is an internal project that targets the automobile platform. So usually SUSE is known for the SUSE Linux enterprise server, which targets that server platform. But CarWAS, is, this project targets automobiles, so things are a bit different. And the first thing, oh, sorry. The first thing that is different is on the server when the kernel crash, usually people get upset, but nothing too bad will happen. But if it's on the car, well, people could get hurt physically. So that's not so ideal. So we want to prevent that from happening. And we want to catch the bug and before we ship them to the customer. Luckily, the kernel already has a lot of facilities or tools for us developers that can catch the bugs. For example, we have the address sanitizer, the undefined behavior sanitizers, memory leak detector, also warn and bug that um, developer have embedded to catch some abnormal situation. But those are not enough. Uh, these are usually useful tool on these are useful tool, but on their own, they need to depend on the bug being triggered, or they depend on the code pass being a uh, step over for it to happen, for the bug to happen and for the tool to detect it. So that's why we need some help from syscaller. Syscaller is a system code fuzzer. So you can see where it gets the name, um, sys system code fuzzer is this color and it will try to find a combination of system calls that can help us discover bugs. What we do is we need to provide it with a system call. Oops, sorry. We need to provide it with some system system call interface, and uh, it will it will then take it and try to try to see a pat uh, try to create a pattern that triggers specific book. Sorry, I'll just quickly check. Oh yeah, sorry. So what we do is in, we provide a system call definition to syscaller that looks like this. For example, we have some structure definition and here we have the uh, socket system call for IPv6 where I, I tell it for IPv6, the socket, the first parameter must be constant. That's if I net six. And this socket system call will return a type that's SOC INET6. So syscaller will see this and realize, huh, so the return value is SOC INET6. So it knows that it can pass this value as the first parameter to the connect system call. And with that, it will try to do, try to find a pattern, try to find uh, ways to trigger certain bugs. For example, maybe it can trigger CASN, uh, the address sanitizers in this case. And when it does so, it will also provide you with uh, the sequence of system call that does it. So for example, for, for the previous dump stack, it tried to open some socket and then send message, send multiple message, duplicate the file descriptor, and then send multiple message again. And that is how it got to the previous screen. And this is the sequence of system call is what the syscaller project calls a reproducer. Essentially, it can reproduce the bug. And, and, uh, and in, in, my, in my test, I only use the reproducers. So I do not run the syscaller itself. I do not do the fuzzing of system, uh, the kernel. 
because fuzzing kernel takes quite some time. And uh, honestly, I want to get something running quickly. And that's why I use the reproducer released by the syscaller project. The syscaller project has some, I'm not sure how many virtual machine, but they have, I believe, quite a lot of virtual machine running on the Google Cloud platform that's constantly testing the upstream kernel and trying to find uh, reproducers for it. And the syscaller project will put this up in GitHub as a repository where it has around 4,000 reproducers for the kernel. And this is what I take. So next I'll talk about the setup. For the setup, I am using a host that's just no more plain four core workstation, about 16 gigabytes of RAM that's in Taipei Lab. And to make sure this, the host has required package and required configuration to run, I use SoulStack. It's a configuration management tool like similar to Ansible or Chef or Puppet. And it what it what the nice thing about it is I can write some requirements declaratively. So for here I say QEMU must be installed, Git must be installed, and certain repository must be cloned to the local directory. And it, the nice thing about it is, is besides writing it declaratively, it will also make sure that the, the machine stays that way. So it will maintain it, maintain it at specific state. So that's quite nice. And that's all for the host. Next, I, have, I also need to set up the system under test. So the one that the reproducer is running on, there's two parts to it, of course the kernel, which I'm testing, and also the root file system, which the uh, which will help me get, uh, sorry, which will help me start the virtual machine and have an environment for the reproducers to run. For the kernel, I couldn't use the normal kernel that we ship because it's missing some configurations such as the sanitizers I mentioned before, and also fault injection framework. And even our debug kernel is missing these some of the configuration. So I had to copy some configuration from a syscaller branch maintained by Richard Pelishrup. I, I think I pronounced it wrong, but sorry. And I get it from him and then added a few more options, and that's the kernel configuration I compiled the kernel with. The next is the root file system. For that, I use Kiwi New Generation. It's a tool also, I believe, made by our Suzu colleague that can allow me to describe what I want the root system to look like. For example, I can tell it to have the IP route 2 package, which is required by some reproducers and also Git, and I can set password, so it's pretty nice. And all of that is, all the root file system generation and their kernel complication is also handled by the salt stack. So besides installing package, salt stack will also compile and uh, generate the root file system for you. So with all the system under test setup done, I can now move on to talk about the tooling. The tooling, for the main the main tool I'm using uh, is a fork of the Linux test project. The fork is also done by Richard Pellerschrup. Um, he added a binary called syswrap, which is a wrapper for running uh, syscaller reproducers. The reason I'm using this is because syscaller reproducers is generated by the machine, so sometimes it does some pretty strange things, and it it made the machine stop responding, which is kind of annoying. So that syswrap is here that helped me to sandbox the reproducers. And that's that the uh, also this fork also contained the reproducer itself as a sub module. So that's how I 
that's how the reproducer is compiled. It comes with the LTP. And for the another tool that I'm using is run LTP support. This one is again by Richard Pedestro. Again, apologies about the name. This is a set of helper script that runs this color reproducers. So it handles running multiple instances of the test. So I can test in parallel, which is much faster. And it also has some script that help me uh, deal with the result files. And run LTP support itself depends on another tool called run LTP new generation. This one is by Serial Rubis. I, I see you in the chat and thank you for that. And run LTP support does all the hard, hard lifting. It starts a virtual machine, it, uh, boosts, it then run the reproducers. And after running the reproducers, it also collects the log, the output of the console. And the really nice thing about it is the result is, can be saved as a JSON file, which I then can use another script to, pre, uh, to process again. And that's pretty much all the tool I use. So the result from run LTP new generation, I feed it into another script. The whole thing is about for uh, the, the whole run takes, the whole run goes over or about 4,000 reproducers. It's about 80 hours for it to run the whole thing, which is quite a long time. But the main reason is that every time a reproducer is run, I reboot the machine. So a lot of time is spent on rebooting itself. And the reason for that is to eliminate some false positives. So preventing previous reproducer from affecting the reproducers I'm running now. And with this, uh, my script will process it into this form. The first will be a hash that's the ID of the reproducers. The reproducers doesn't have a name, they just have an ID. And the next line will be the kernel message that show up related to the reproducer, and then a few stack trace. And that pretty much sums up the whole setup. And now I want to talk a little bit about a few challenges I met. So for the tests, for running tests, a great obstacle is the false positive. Uh, in my case, there is some bug that's associated with a bug, I guess, in QEMU that affect how the kernel uh, look at the serial interface. So sometimes the test will run for a few minutes and the kernel output gets too much, the console will stop responding and run LTP new generation will think that, oh, this, this reproducer has triggered something that's interesting. But in reality, it's just, uh, it's just another bug that's causing it. So when I see the result, I run LTP NG will tell me something's wrong, but it's just a false positive. And another challenge, not, not really a challenge in itself, but maybe something that can be improved upon is that the syscaller project only tests the non pre MRT kernel. So it doesn't it doesn't, there's very cases that it might be a real time issue that the upstream will have no, uh, no reproducer for. And in that case, we can, I guess the only thing we can do is to run it faster ourselves. But as I said, that takes some time and I'm currently don't have that much cycle for that, but it's definitely something to improve. And something I hope to accomplish in the future is that, of course, I hope the test to run faster. Richard already has a few patches that can make run LTP new generation run much faster and um, even can restart the test without rebooting. So that's nice. And I also hope there's more automation. So if in the future I could get a po false positive breakdown, maybe I could, uh, detect an issue and just send a report to Bugzilla. That's what I'm hoping I could do, and hope I hope it'll be done.
done for Zoom. And that sums up my talk. So that's all I have for the setup. Thank you. Thank you. There is a question in the chat from Michal Utsko. If you have any idea, what is the tested code coverage by the test you have? I, I have no idea. Although, maybe, yeah, I have no idea. But there is, I remember there is the kernel coverage tool that's, that's used by a Cisco project. Maybe there's a way to use that. Uh, yes, that, that would be definitely possible, although it would require some infrastructure. I believe it needs a, a VM kernel build or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I am I have no idea how to use use it. Yeah, and oh syscaller generates HTML pages. Hi, Shung C. Hello. This is, this is Giovanni. Question on your project. So you're taking those repros from uh, a GitHub collection uh, made by, of reproducers found by someone else. By, by yes. The, and uh, you are running them, uh, running this reproducer on your test uh, uh, system under test. Uh, are you... Uh, your your specific goal is to fix some of those bugs because I guess if for each reproducer that co that correspond a bug right a kernel bug. Yes. So yes. your 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 goal is just to rep to make sure that those reproducers are actually reproducible, or you also try to fix the bug. What is uh, your your objective? So my objective started as. Uh, making sure that the bug, the bug is fixed. Making sure that our kernel has the the fixes for for those. But it's quite interesting that the reproducers sometimes also trigger bugs in the real time kernel that's not seen upstream. So it mm. it sort of turns it into some some sort of test as well. Besides just finding making sure that I have to fix it. It also can discover some issue, even though I'm not running the fuzzer. Okay, so you're trying to see if the reproducers affect us, right? Yes. Okay, and if they don't, you cannot conclude that this, uh, the bug that the reproducer show is fixed upstream. You cannot say, okay, this reproducer is not valid anymore, you can close it. You cannot say that, or yes. Well, I, I guess we can, um, because there there really are quite a lot of reproducers that are that is marked invalid upstream, but right now, right now I'm I I'm not I, I still test them, and because I guess I'm kind of lazy to delete them from from the set. Sure. But I so, so okay. Please continue. Sorry. Go. No, but uh, I think ideally I should delete those invalid reproducers, so that that should reduce some noise in the in the test set. Yeah, but I understand. I understand the goal of your project now. You are auditing the set of reproducer to so that we can have a real grasp on how many of them are a, a real threat, how many of them are a real problem for us. Would, is that correct? Does that summarize your work? Uh, 
I, I guess it's still more of a trying to poke our kernel to making sure it's okay, because this, 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 uh, I guess I'm, I re kind of received this project uh, from, from our external, from an external source, I guess I can oh, say so, that. So, so th this is not your initiative. There is someone who says, we need this, right? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. I see, I see. Yeah, I so I, I guess it's more like, more like regression, as Vlasimil mentioned. It's more of a regression test. I see, I see. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. That clarifies okay. for it. Well, but it it also actually found already a RT specific bug, right? So it found the use of sec sec sequence lock, which is okay with without preempt RT, but which is not okay with with preempt RT, and and it was already fixed. So it even though it doesn't have any RT specific uh, reproducers, it actually does find bugs when when the code is not RT ready. So that's that's also yeah, very so, positive. Uh, yeah, that's really quite nice. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I guess if this is public, but if anyone can have some suggestion for how sh how can I better use our SUSE internal QA infrastructure, um, please tell me so. I I'd love to hear about it. So we, we do have some QA people in, in the chat and they, they actually expect, I'm not sure how, if, how much you follow the chat that they would really like to see. So we used to have a flavor uh, of the kernel, the configuration that actually was suited for Syscaller, but it was basically disabled because the, the runtime cost is too high. But they would actually appreciate if we could just reintroduce that special flavor, which wouldn't be really supported or wouldn't be distributed. But we would have it in in uh, in the tree and built uh, as, as binary RPM automatically, so that they wouldn't have to rebuild the kernel, and they could just plug in uh, syscaller runs into their infrastructure. So that's probably something we should do in our branches. Okay, that that would, be, that, that would help me as well. And and it used to be the case, so it's basically just a matter of partially reverting the commit that removed the flavor. Okay. Good. Thanks.